The Xinhai Revolution Chinese, Xinhai Zheming Pinyin, Xinhai Geming, also known as the Chinese Revolution or the Revolution of 1911, was a revolution that overthrew China's last imperial dynasty, the Qing dynasty and established the Republic of China rock. The revolution was named Xinhai Xinhai because it occurred in 1911, the year of the Xinhai Xin metal pig. Stem branch in the sexagenary cycle of the Chinese calendar, the revolution consisted of many revolts and uprisings. The turning point was the Wuchang Uprising on 10 October 1911, which was the result of the mishandling of the railway protection movement. The revolution ended with the abdication of the six-year-old last emperor, Puyi, on 12 February 1912, that marked the end of 2,000 years of imperial rule and the beginning of China's early republican era. The revolution arose mainly in response to the decline of the Qing state, which had proven ineffective in its efforts to modernize China and confront foreign aggression. Many underground anti-Qing groups, with the support of Chinese revolutionaries in exile, tried to overthrow the Qing. The brief civil war that ensued was ended through a political compromise between Yuan Shikai, the late Qing military strongman, and Sun Yat-sen, the leader of the Tongmengui United League. After the Qing court transferred power to the newly founded republic, a provisional coalition government was created along with the National Assembly. However, political power of the new national government in Beijing was soon thereafter monopolized by Yuan and led to decades of political division and warlordism, including several attempts at imperial restoration. The Republic of China in Taiwan and the People's Republic of China on the mainland both consider themselves the legitimate successors to the Xinhai Revolution and honor the ideals of the revolution including nationalism, republicanism, modernization of China and national unity. The 10th of October is commemorated in Taiwan as Double Ten Day, the National Day of the Rock. In mainland China, Hong Kong, and Macau, the day is celebrated as the anniversary of the Xinhai Revolution. Background After suffering its first defeat to the West in the First Opium War in 1842, the Qing Imperial Court struggled to contain foreign intrusions into China. Efforts to adjust and reform the traditional methods of governance were constrained by a deeply conservative court culture that did not want to give away too much authority to reform. Following defeat in the Second Opium War in 1860, the Qing tried to modernize by adopting certain Western technologies through the self-strengthening movement from 1861. In the wars against the Taiping 1851-64, Nian 1851-68, the Muslims of Yunnan 1856-68 and the Northwest 1862-77, the traditional imperial troops proved themselves incompetent and the court came to rely on local armies. In 1895, China suffered another defeat during the First Sino-Japanese War. This demonstrated that traditional Chinese feudal society also needed to be modernized if the technological and commercial advancements were to succeed. In 1898 the Guangxu Emperor was guided by reformers like Kong Yuwei and Liang Qichao for a drastic reform in education, military and economy under the Hundred Days Reform. The reform was abruptly cancelled by a conservative coup led by Empress Dowager Cixi. The Guangxu Emperor, who had always been a puppet dependent on Cixi, was put under house arrest in June 1898. Reformers Kong and Liang would be exiled. While in Canada, in June 1899, they tried to form the Emperor Protection Society in an attempt to restore the Emperor. Empress Dowager Cixi mainly controlled the Qing dynasty from this point on. The Boxer Rebellion prompted another foreign invasion of Beijing in 1900 and the imposition of unequal treaty terms, which carved away territories, created extraterritorial concessions and gave away trade privileges. Under internal and external pressure, the Qing court began to adopt some of the reforms. The Qing managed to maintain its monopoly on political power by suppressing, often with great brutality, all domestic rebellions. Dissidents could operate only in secret societies and underground organizations, in foreign concessions or in exile overseas. Organization for revolution Earliest groups There were many revolutionaries and groups that wanted to overthrow the Qing government to re-establish Han-led government. 
The earliest revolutionary organizations were founded outside of China, such as Yang Ku Wan's Foreign Literary Society, created in Hong Kong in 1890. There were 15 members, including Ze Tisan Tai, who did political satire such as The Situation in the Far East, one of the first ever Chinese manhua, and who later became one of the core founders of the South China Morning Post. Sun Yat-sen's Xingzhongwei Revive China Society was established in Honolulu in 1894 with the main purpose of raising funds for revolutions. The two organizations were merged in 1894. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Smaller groups. The Waxingwei China Revival Society was founded in 1904 with notables like Huang Xing, Zhang Shizhao, Chen Tianhua and Song Jiaoren, along with 100 others. Their motto was, "...take one province by force, and inspire the other provinces to rise up." The Guangfahui Restoration Society was also founded in 1904, in Shanghai with Kai Yuanpei. Other notable members include Zhang Binglin and Dao Chenjiang. Despite professing the anti-Qing cause, the Guangfahui was highly critical of Sun Yat-sen. One of the most famous female revolutionaries was Chu Jin, who fought for women's rights and was also from Guangfahui. There were also many other minor revolutionary organizations, such as Lizi Zui, Li Ji Zewei in Jiangsu, Gong Changwei, Gong Changwei in Sichuan, Yi Wenwei, Yi Wenwei in Hanzaduliwei, Hanzu Du Li Wei in Fujian, Yi Zish, Yi Jishi in Yangshi, Yu Wangwei, Yu Wangwei in Anhui and Kunjui, Kun Jiwei, Kun Jishi in Guangzhou. There were also criminal organizations that were anti-Manchu, including the Green Gang and Hongmen Jigongtang. Jigongtang Sun Yat-sen himself came in contact with the Hongmen, also known as Tiandiwi Heaven and Earth Society. Jelohui Elder Brother Society was another group, with Juda, Wu Yuzang, Lu Jidan, Lu Ji Dan and He Long. This is the revolutionary group that would eventually develop a strong link with the later Communist Party. Tongmengui Sun Yat-sen successfully united the Revive China Society, Waxingui and Guangfahui in the summer of 1905, thereby establishing the Unified Tongmengui United League in August 1905 in Tokyo. While it started in Tokyo, it had loose organizations distributed across and outside the country. Sun Yat-sen was the leader of this unified group. Other revolutionaries who worked with the Tongmengui include Wang Jingwei and Hu Hanman. When the Tongmenwi was established, more than 90% of the Tongmenwi members were between 17 to 26 years of age. Some of the work in the era includes manhwa publications, such as the Journal of Current Pictorial. Topic. Later groups In February 1906 Rizui Wei also had many revolutionaries, including Sun Wu, Sun Wu Zhang Nangxian, Zhang Nan Xian He Jiwei and Feng Mumin. A nucleus of attendees of this conference evolved into the Tongmenwi's establishment in Hubei. In July 1907 several members of Tongmenwi in Tokyo advocated a revolution in the area of the Yangtze River. Lu Qi, Lu Kui Yi Zhao Defeng, Zhao Da Feng, Zhang Bo Shang, Zhang Bo Shang, and Sun Wu. Sun Wu established Gong Jinwei Progressive Association. Gong Jin In January 1911, the revolutionary group Zhengwu Zush, Zhen Wu Zhe was renamed as Wen Zush Literary Society. Wen Zhe, Zhang Yi Wu, Zhang Yi Wu was chosen as the leader. These two organizations would play a big role in the Wuchang Uprising. Many young revolutionaries adopted the radical programs of the anarchists. In Tokyo Liu Shaipei proposed the overthrow of the Manchus and a return to Chinese classical values. In Paris Li Shizhen, Wu Jiwei and Zhang Renji agreed with Sun on the necessity of revolution and joined the Tongmengui, but argued that a political replacement of one government with another government would not be progress. Revolution in family, gender and social values would remove the need for government and coercion. Zhang Ji was among the anarchists who defended assassination and terrorism as a means toward revolution, but others insisted that only education was justifiable. Important anarchists included Kai Yuanpei, Wang Jingwei and Zhang Renji, who gave Sun major financial help. Many of these anarchists would later assume high positions in the Kuomintang KMT. Topic. Views. 
Many revolutionaries promoted anti-Qing, anti-Manchu sentiments and revived memories of conflict between the ethnic minority Manchu and the ethnic majority Han Chinese from the late Ming dynasty 1368 to 1644. Leading intellectuals were influenced by books that had survived from the last years of the Ming dynasty, the last dynasty of Han Chinese. In 1904, Sun Yat-sen announced that his organization's goal was to expel the Tatar barbarians, to revive Zonghua, to establish a republic, and to distribute land equally among the people. Ku Chu Da Lu Wei Fu Zhonghua Chuang Li Min Guo Ping Jun De Quan. Many of the underground groups promoted the ideas of resist Qing and restore Ming. Fan Qing Fu Ming that had been around since the days of the Taiping Rebellion. Others, such as Zhang Binglin, supported straight up lines like slay the Manchus and concepts like anti-Manchuism. Xing Han Mie Hu Pai Man Zhu Yi Topic. Strata and groups The Xinhai Revolution was supported by many groups, including students and intellectuals who returned from abroad, as well as participants of the revolutionary organizations, overseas Chinese, soldiers of the new army, local gentry, farmers and others. Topic. Overseas Chinese Assistance from overseas Chinese was important in the Xinhai Revolution. In 1894, the first year of the Revived China Society, the first meeting ever held by the group was held in the home of Ho Fan, an overseas Chinese who was the leader of the First Chinese Church of Christ. Overseas Chinese supported and actively participated in the funding of revolutionary activities, especially the Southeast Asia Chinese of Malaya, Singapore and Malaysia. Many of these groups were reorganized by Sun, who was referred to as the father of the Chinese Revolution. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Newly emerged intellectuals. In 1906, after the abolition of the imperial examinations, the Qing government established many new schools and encouraged students to study abroad. Many young people attended the new schools or went abroad to study in places like Japan. A new class of intellectuals emerged from those students, who contributed immensely to the Xinhai Revolution. Besides Sun Yat-sen, key figures in the revolution, such as Huang Xing, Song Jiaoren, Hu Hanman, Liao Zongkai, Zhu Zixin and Wang Jingwei, were all Chinese students in Japan. Some were young students like Zhou Rong, known for writing the book Revolutionary Army, in which he talked about the extermination of the Manchus for the 260 years of oppression, sorrow, cruelty and tyranny and turning the sons and grandsons of Yellow Emperor into George Washington's. Before 1908, revolutionaries focused on coordinating these organizations in preparation for uprisings that these organizations would launch, hence, these groups would provide most of the manpower needed for the overthrow of the Qing dynasty. After the Xinhai Revolution, Sun Yat-sen recalled the days of recruiting support for the revolution and said, The literati were deeply into the search for honors and profits, so they were regarded as having only secondary importance. By contrast, organizations like Sanhehui were able to sow widely the ideas of resisting the Qing and restoring the Ming. Topic. Gentry and businessmen The strength of the gentry in local politics had become apparent. From December 1908, the Qing government created some apparatus to allow the gentry and businessmen to participate in politics. These middle-class people were originally supporters of constitutionalism. However, they became disenchanted when the Qing government created a cabinet with Prince Qing as prime minister. By early 1911, an experimental cabinet had 13 members, nine of whom were Manchus selected from the imperial family. Topic. Foreigners Besides Chinese and overseas Chinese, some of the supporters and participants of the Xinhai Revolution were foreigners, among them, the Japanese were the most active group. Some Japanese even became members of Tongmengui. Miyazaki Tauten was the closest Japanese supporter, others included Hayama Shu and Ryohei Uchida. Homer Lee, an American, who became Sun Yat-sen's closest foreign advisor in 1910, supported Sun Yat-sen's military ambitions. British soldier Roland J. Mulkern also took part in the revolution. 
Some foreigners, such as English explorer Arthur de Carl Sowerby, led expeditions to rescue foreign missionaries in 1911 and 1912. The far right wing Japanese ultra nationalist Black Dragon Society supported Sun Yat sen's activities against the Manchus, believing that overthrowing the Qing would help the Japanese take over the Manchu homeland and that Han Chinese would not oppose the takeover. Toyama believed that the Japanese could easily take over Manchuria and Sun Yat sen and other anti Qing revolutionaries would not resist and help the Japanese take over and enlarge the opium trade in China while the Qing was trying to destroy the opium trade. The Japanese Black Dragons supported Sun Yat-sen and anti-Manchu revolutionaries until the Qing collapsed. The far-right-wing Japanese ultranationalist Geniosha leader Toyama Mitsuru supported anti-Manchu, anti-Qing revolutionary activities including by Sun Yat-sen and supported Japanese taking over Manchuria. The anti-Qing Tongmengui was founded and based in exile in Japan where many anti-Qing revolutionaries gathered. The Japanese had been trying to unite anti-Manchu groups made out of Han people to take down the Qing. Japanese were the ones who helped Sun Yat-sen unite all anti-Qing, anti-Manchu revolutionary groups together and there were Japanese like Toten Miyazaki inside of the anti-Manchu Tongmengui Revolutionary Alliance. The Black Dragon Society hosted the Tongmengui in its first meeting. The Black Dragon Society had very intimate relations with Sun Yat-sen and promoted Pan-Asianism and Sun sometimes passed himself off as Japanese. That had connections with Sun for a long time. Japanese groups like the Black Dragon Society had a large impact on Sun Yat-sen. According to an American military historian, Japanese military officers were part of the Black Dragon Society. The Yakuza and Black Dragon Society helped arrange in Tokyo for Sun Yat-sen to hold the first Kuomintang meetings, and were hoping to flood China with opium and overthrow the Qing and deceive Chinese into overthrowing the Qing to Japan's benefit. After the revolution was successful, the Japanese Black Dragons started infiltrating China and spreading opium. The Black Dragons pushed for the takeover of Manchuria by Japan in 1932. Sun Yat-sen was married to a Japanese, Kaoru Itsuki. Topic. Soldiers of the New Armies The New Army was formed in 1901 after the defeat of the Qings in the First Sino-Japanese War. They were launched by a decree from eight provinces. New Army troops were by far the best trained and equipped. The recruits were of a higher quality than the Old Army and received regular promotions. Beginning in 1908, the revolutionaries began to shift their call to the New Armies. Sun Yat-sen and the revolutionaries infiltrated the new army. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Uprisings and incidents. The central focus of the uprisings were mostly connected with the Tongmengui and Sun Yat-sen, including subgroups. Some uprisings involved groups that never merged with the Tongmengui. Sun Yat-sen may have participated in eight to ten uprisings. All uprisings failed prior to the Wuchang uprising. First Guangzhou Uprising In the spring of 1895, the Revive China Society, which was based in Hong Kong, planned the First Guangzhou Uprising. Guangzhou Qi Lu Haodong was tasked with designing the revolutionaries' blue sky with a white sun flag. On 26 October 1895, Young Ku Wan and Sun Yat-sen led Zheng Shiliang and Lu Haodong to Guangzhou, preparing to capture Guangzhou in one strike. However, the details of their plans were leaked to the Qing government. The government began to arrest revolutionaries, including Liu Haodong, who was later executed. The first Guangzhou uprising was a failure. Under pressure from the Qing government, the government of Hong Kong forbade these two men to enter the territory for five years. Sun Yat-sen went into exile, promoting the Chinese Revolution and raising funds in Japan, the United States, Canada and Britain. In 1901, following the Weizhou Uprising, Young Ku Wan was assassinated by Qing agents in Hong Kong. After his death, his family protected his identity by not putting his name on his tomb, just a number, 6,348. <laughs> <laughs> Independence Army Uprising In 1901, after the Boxer Rebellion started, Tang Keichang Tang Kai Chong and Tan Sitong of the previous Foot Emancipation Society organized the Independence Army. 
The Independence Army Uprising was planned to occur on 23 August 1900. Their goal was to overthrow Empress Dowager Cixi to establish a constitutional monarchy under the Guangxu Emperor. Their plot was discovered by the Governor General of Hunan and Hubei. About 20 conspirators were arrested and executed. Weizhou Uprising On 8 October 1900, Sun Yat-sen ordered the launch of the Weizhou Uprising. Weizhou Qi the Revolutionary Army was led by Zheng Shiliang and initially included 20,000 men, who fought for half a month. However, after the Japanese Prime Minister prohibited Sun Yat-sen from carrying out revolutionary activities on Taiwan, Zheng Shiliang had no choice but to order the army to disperse. This uprising therefore also failed. British soldier Roland J. Mulkern participated in this uprising. Topic. Great Ming Uprising A very short uprising occurred from 25 to 28 January 1903, to establish a Great Ming Heavenly Kingdom. Da Ming Shun Tian Guo. This involved Zhe Tisan Tai, Li Jitang, Li Ji Tang, Liang Miguang, Liang Mu Guang, and Hong Quan Fu, Hong Quan Fu, who formerly took part in the Jintian uprising during the Taiping Heavenly Kingdom era. Topic: <laughs> Ping Lu Li Uprising. Ma Fuyi, Ma Fuyi, and Wang Xingwei was involved in an uprising in the three areas of Pingxiang, Liu Yang, and Liling, called Ping Lu Li Uprising. Ping Lu Li Qi Yi in 1905. The uprising recruited miners as early as 1903 to rise against the Qing ruling class. After the uprising failed, Ma Fuyi was executed. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Beijing Zhengyangmen East Railway assassination attempt. Wu Yu, Wu Yu of Guangfahui carried out an assassination attempt at the Beijing Zhengyangmen East Railway Station in an attack on five Qing officials on 24 September 1905. <laughs> Wang Gang Uprising The Wang Gang Uprising was launched on of May 1907, in Chaozhou. The Revolutionary Party, along with Xu Zuchu, Xu Shui Chu, Chen Yangpo, Shane Yangbo, and Yu Tongshi, Yu Tongshi launched the uprising and captured Wang Gang City. Other Japanese that followed include Zan Yi Zhang Ji and Kai Heng. After the uprising began, the Qing government quickly and forcefully suppressed it. Around 200 revolutionaries were killed. Topic: <laughs> Weizhou Kinahu Uprising. In the same year, Sun Yat-sen sent more revolutionaries to Weizhou to launch the Weizhou Kinahu Uprising. Weizhou Qi Nu Hu Qi Yi. On the 2nd of June, Deng Ziyu, Deng Ziyu, and Chen Chuan, Shane Chun, gathered some followers, and together they seized Qing arms in the lake, 20 kilometers, 12 miles, from Weizhou. They killed several Qing soldiers and attacked Taiwei, Taiwei, on the 5th of June. The Qing army fled in disorder, and the revolutionaries exploited the opportunity, capturing several towns. They defeated the Qing army once again in Baziyi. Many organizations voiced their support after the uprising, and the number of revolutionary forces increased to 200 men at its height. The uprising, however, ultimately failed. Topic. On Qing Uprising On 6 July 1907, Xu Xilin of Guangfahui led an uprising in Anqing, Anhui, which became known as the Anqing Uprising, and Qing Qiyi Xu Xilin at the time was the police commissioner as well as the supervisor of the police academy. He led an uprising that was to assassinate the provincial governor of Anhui, Enming. Enming. They were defeated after four hours of fighting. Xu was captured, and Enming's bodyguards cut out his heart and liver and ate them. His cousin Chu Jin was executed a few days later. Topic: <inaudible> Qinzhou Uprising. From August to September 1907, the Qinzhou Uprising occurred. Qin Zhou Fang Sheng Qi Yi to protest against heavy taxation from the government. Sun Yat-sen sent Wang Heshen, Wang Heshen there to assist the revolutionary army and captured the county in September. 
After that, they attempted to besiege and capture Chinjo, but they were unsuccessful. They eventually retreated to the area of Shiwantashan, while Wang Heshen returned to Vietnam. Jeningan Uprising On 1 December 1907, the Jeningan Uprising took place at Jeningan, a pass on the Chinese-Vietnamese border. Sun Yat-sen sent Huang Mintang, Huang Ming Tang to monitor the pass, which was guarded by a fort. With the assistance of supporters among the fort's defenders, the revolutionaries captured the cannon tower in Jeningan. Sun Yat-sen, Huang Xing and Hu Hanman personally went to the tower to command the battle. The Qing government sent troops led by Long Jiguang and Liu Ranjing to counterattack, and the revolutionaries were forced to retreat into the mountainous areas. After the failure of this uprising, Sun was forced to move to Singapore due to anti-Sun sentiments within the revolutionary groups. He would not return to the mainland until after the Wuchang uprising. Qin <inaudible> Lian <inaudible> Uprising On 27 March 1908, Huang Xing launched a raid, later known as the Qin Lian Uprising, Qin Lian Shang Si Chi Yi from a base in Vietnam and attacked the cities of Qinzhou and Lianzhou in Guangdong. The struggle continued for 14 days but was forced to terminate after the revolutionaries ran out of supplies. <laughs> Heku Uprising In April 1908, another uprising was launched in Yunnan, Heku, called the Heku Uprising. Yun Nan He Ko Chi Huang Ming Tang Huang Ming Tang led 200 men from Vietnam and attacked Heku on 30 April. Other revolutionaries who participated include Wang Heshen Wang He Shun and Guan Renfu. Guan Renfu They were outnumbered and defeated by government troops, however, and the uprising failed. Mapawing Uprising On 19 November 1908, the Mapawing Uprising Ma Pao Ying was launched by revolutionary group Yu Wangwei Yu Wangwei member Shang Chenge Shang Sheng Ji at Anhui. Yu Wangwei, at this time, was a subset of Tongmengwei. This uprising also failed. Zhengshu <laughs> New Army Uprising In February 1910, the Zhengshu New Army Uprising, Zhengshu Xin Jun Qi Yi, also known as the Guangzhou New Army Uprising, Guangzhou Xin Jun Qi Yi, took place. This involved a conflict between the citizens and local police against the new army. After revolutionary leader Ni Yingdian was killed by Qing forces, the remaining revolutionaries were quickly defeated, causing the uprising to fail. Topic: Second Guangzhou Uprising. On 27 April 1911, an uprising occurred in Guangzhou, known as the Second Guangzhou Uprising Xinhai Guangzhou Qi Yi or Yellow Flower Mound Revolt Huang Hua Gang Ji It ended in disaster, as 86 bodies were found only 72 could be identified. The 72 revolutionaries were remembered as martyrs. Revolutionary Lin Juman Lin Jue Min was one of the 72. On the eve of battle, he wrote the legendary, A Letter to My Wife. Yu Qi Jue Bai e Shu later to be considered as a masterpiece in Chinese literature. Wuchang Uprising The Literary Society Wen Zhe and the Progressive Association Gong Jin Wei were revolutionary organizations involved in the uprising that mainly began with a railway protection movement protest. In the late summer, some Hubei New Army units were ordered to neighboring Sichuan to quell the railway protection movement, a mass protest against the Qing government's seizure and handover of local railway development ventures to foreign powers. Banner officers like Duan Fang, the railroad superintendent, and Zhao Erfeng led the new army against the railway protection movement. The new army units of Hubei had originally been the Hubei Army, which had been trained by Qing official Zhang Zedong. On 24 September, the Literary Society and Progressive Association convened a conference in Wuchang, along with 60 representatives from local new army units. During the conference, they established a headquarters for the uprising. The leaders of the two organizations, Zhang Yi Wu, Zhang Yi Wu and Sun Wu, Sun Wu were elected as commander and chief of staff. 
Initially, the date of the uprising was to be 6 October 1911. It was postponed to a later date due to insufficient preparations. Revolutionaries intent on overthrowing the Qing dynasty had built bombs, and on 9 October, one accidentally exploded. Sun Yat-sen himself had no direct part in the uprising and was traveling in the United States at the time in an effort to recruit more support from among overseas Chinese. The Qing viceroy of Huguang, Rui Cheng, Rui Sheng tried to track down and arrest the revolutionaries. Squad leader Shang Binkin Shang Bing Kun and others decided not to delay the uprising any longer and launched the revolt on 10 October 1911, at 7 p.m. The revolt was a success, the entire city of Wuchang was captured by the revolutionaries on the morning of of October. That evening, they established a tactical headquarters and announced the establishment of the Military Government of Hubei of Republic of China. The conference chose Li Yuanhong as the governor of the temporary government. Qing officers like the Bannerman Duanfang and Zhao Erfeng were killed by the revolutionary forces. Provincial uprisings After the success of the Wuchang uprising, many other protests occurred throughout the country for various reasons. Some of the uprisings declared restoration of the Han Chinese rule. Other uprisings were a step toward independence, and some were protests or rebellions against the local authorities. Regardless the reason for the uprising the outcome was that all provinces in the country renounced the Qing dynasty and joined the ROC. Changsha <laughs> Restoration On the 22nd of October 1911, the Hunan Tongmengui were led by Zhao Defeng Zhao da Yi and Chen Zuoxin, Shane Zuoxin. They headed an armed group, consisting partly of revolutionaries from Hong Yang and partly of defecting new army units, in a campaign to extend the uprising into Changsha. They captured the city and killed the local imperial general. Then they announced the establishment of the Hunan military government of the Republic of China and announced their opposition to the Qing Empire. Topic. Shaanxi Uprising On the same day, Shaanxi's Tongmengui, led by Jing Dingcheng Jing Ding Sheng and Qian Ding Qian Ding as well as Jing Wumu Jing Wu Mu and others including Jelohui, launched an uprising and captured Xi'an after two days of struggle. The Muslim general Ma Anlang led more than 20 battalions of Wei Muslim troops to defend the Qing Imperials and attacked Shaanxi, held by revolutionary Zhang Fengui. Zhang Feng. The attack was successful, but after news arrived that Puyi was about to abdicate, Ma agreed to join the new republic. The revolutionaries established the Qinlong Fuan military government and elected Zhang Fengui, a member of the Yuanrizi society, Yuanri Ji Wei as new governor. Xi'an Manchu City Man finally fell on 24 October, after a massacre of 20,000 Manchus in living there. Many of its Manchu defenders committed suicide, including Qing General Wenrui, Wenrui who threw himself down a well. <inaudible> Zhujiang Uprising On 23 October, Lin Sen, Zhang Kun, Zhang Kun Kai Wei, Kai Wei and other members of the Tongmengui in the province of Yangshi plotted a revolt of new army units. After they achieved victory, they announced their independence. The Zhujiang military government was then established. Topic: <laughs> Shaanxi Taiyuan Uprising. On the 29th of October, Yan Qishan of the New Army led an uprising in Taiyuan, the capital city of the province of Shaanxi, along with Yao Yiji, Yao Yi Jia, Huang Goliang, Huang Guoliang, Wen Shaokan, Wen Shou Quan, Li Chenglin, Li Sheng Lin, Zhang Shuzi, Zhang Shu Ji, and Chao Shi, Chao Shu. The Xinhai rebels in Taiyuan bombarded the streets where Banner people resided and killed all the Manchu. They managed to kill the Qing governor of Shaanxi, Lu Zhongqi. Lu Zhang. They then announced the establishment of Shaanxi military government with Yan Qishan as the military governor. Yan Qishan would later become one of the warlords that plagued China during what was known as the Warlord Era. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Kunming Double Ninth Uprising. 
On 30 October, Li Zhenyuan, Li Zhenyuan of the Tongmengui in Yunnan joined with Kai Yi, Luo Pijin, Luo Pei Jin Tang Jiao, and other officers of the new army to launch the Double Ninth Uprising. Zhang Juqi they captured Kunming the next day and established the Yunnan military government, electing Kai Yi as the military governor. Nanchang Restoration On 31 October, the Nanchang branch of the Tongmengui led new army units in a successful uprising. They established the Yangshi military government. Li Lijun was elected as the military governor. Li declared Yangshi as independent and launched an expedition against Qing official Yuan Shikai. <laughs> Shanghai armed uprising On 3 November, Shanghai's Tongmengui, Guangfahui and merchants led by Chen Kamei, Shane Chi Mei Li Pingsu, Li Ping Shu, Zhang Cheng Yu, Zhang Sheng Yu Li Yingxi, Li Yingxi Li Zaihi, Li Xie He and Song Jiaoren organized an armed rebellion in Shanghai. They received the support of local police officers. The rebels captured the Jiangnan workshop on the 4th and captured Shanghai soon after. On 8 November, they established the Shanghai military government and elected Chen Kamei as the military governor. He would eventually become one of the founders of the ROC Four Big Families, along with some of the most well-known families of the era. Guzhou <laughs> <laughs> Uprising On 4 November, Zhang Bailin Zhang Bai Lin of the Revolutionary Party in Guzhou led an uprising along with new army units and students from the military academy. They immediately captured Gai Yang and established the Great Han Guzhou military government, electing Yang Jincheng Yang Jin Sheng and Zhao De Quan Zhao De Quan as the chief and vice governor. Zhejiang <laughs> Uprising Also on 4 November, revolutionaries in Zhejiang urged the new army units in Hangzhou to launch an uprising. Zhu Rui, Zhu Rui Wu Saiyu, Wu Siyu Lu Gongwang, Lu Gongwang and others of the new army captured the military supplies workshop. Other units, led by Chiang Kai-shek and Yin Zere, Yin Rui Ji captured most of the government offices. Eventually, Hangzhou was under the control of the revolutionaries, and the constitutionist Tang Shaoqian Tang Shouqian was elected as the military governor. Jiangsu <inaudible> <inaudible> Restoration On 5 November, Jiangsu constitutionists and gentry urged Qing governor Cheng De Quan, Sheng De Quan to announce independence and established the Jiangsu revolutionary military government with Cheng himself as the governor. Unlike some of the other cities, anti-Manchu violence began after the restoration on 7 November in Zhenjiang. Qing General Zaimu Zaimu agreed to surrender, but because of a misunderstanding, the revolutionaries were unaware that their safety was guaranteed. The Manchu quarters were ransacked, and an unknown number of Manchus were killed. Zaimu, feeling betrayed, committed suicide. This is regarded as the Zhenjiang Uprising. Anhui Uprising Members of Anhui's Tongmengui also launched an uprising on that day and laid siege to the provincial capital. The constitutionists persuaded Zhu Jiabao, Zhu Jiabao the Qing governor of Anhui, to announce independence. <laughs> Guangxi Uprising On 7 November, the Guangxi Politics Department decided to secede from the Qing government, announcing Guangxi's independence. Qing Governor Shen Bingkun Shane Bing Kun was allowed to remain governor, but Liu Ranjing would soon become the new governor. Liu Ranjing would later rise to prominence during the Warlord Era as one of the warlords, and his bandits controlled Guangxi for more than a decade. Under the leadership of Huang Xiaohang, the Muslim law student Bai Changxi enlisted in a dare to die unit to fight as a revolutionary. <inaudible> Fujian independence In November, members of Fujian's branch of the Tongmengui, along with Sun Daoren, Sun Daoren of the New Army, launched an uprising against the Qing army. The Qing viceroy, Song Shou, Song Shou committed suicide. On of November, the entire Fujian province declared independence. 
the Fujian military government was established, and Sun Daoran was elected as the military governor. Guangdong independence Near the end of October, Chen Zhongming, Deng Keng, Deng Keng Peng Raihai, Peng Rui Hai and other members of Guangdong's Tongmengui organized local militias to launch the uprising in Wazhou, Nane, Sunda and Sanshui in Guangdong province. On 8 November, after being persuaded by Hu Hanman, General Li Zun, Li Zun and Long Jiguang Long Ji Guang of the Guangdong Navy agreed to support the revolution. The Qing Viceroy of Liangguang, Zhang Mingqi, Zhang Mingqi was forced to discuss with the local representatives a proposal for Guangdong's independence. They decided to announce it the next day. Chen Zhongming then captured Weizhou. On 9 November, Guangdong announced its independence and established a military government. They elected Hu Hanman and Chen Zhongming as the chief and vice governor. Chu Fengjia is known to have helped make the independence declaration more peaceful. It was unknown at the time if representatives from the European colonies of Hong Kong and Macau would be ceded to the new government. Topic: <laughs> Shandong Independence. On the 13th of November, persuaded by revolutionary Din Weifen, Ding Weifen and several other officers of the new army, the Qing governor of Shandong, Sun Baoqi, agreed to secede from the Qing government and announced Shandong's independence. Topic. Ningxia Uprising On 17 November, Ningxia the Tongmengui launched the Ningxia Uprising Ning Dang Qi. The revolutionaries sent Yu Yoran to Zhang Jiashuan to meet Dungan Sufi master Ma Yuanzhang to persuade him not to support the Qing. However, Ma did not want to endanger his relationship with the Qings. He sent the eastern Gansu Muslim militia under the command of one of his sons to help Ma Qi crush the Ningxia Jelohui. The Ningxia Revolutionary Military Government was established on 23 November. Some of the revolutionaries involved included Huang Yu, Huang Yu and Shang Shen, Shang Shen who gathered new army forces at Qinzhou. Qin Topic. Sichuan independence On 21 November, Guang'an organized the Great Han Shu Northern Military Government. On the 22nd of November, Chengdu and Sichuan began to declare independence. By the 27th, the Great Han Sichuan Military Government was established, headed by revolutionary Pu Dianzhen. Pu Dianzhen, Qing official Duan Fang, Duan Fang would also be killed. Topic: <laughs> Nanking Uprising. On 8 November, supported by the Tongmengui, Xu Xiaojen, Xu Xiaojen of the New Army announced an uprising in Molin Pass, Mo Lingguan 30 km 19 miles away from Nanking City. Xu Xiaojen, Chen Kamei and other generals decided to form a united army under Xu to strike Nanking together. On the 11th of November, the United Army headquarters was established in Zhenjiang. Between 24 November and 1 December, under the command of Xu Xiaojian, the United Army captured Wu Longshan, Wu Longshan Mufushan, Mu Fu Shan Yuhuatai, Yu Watai Tinbao City Tianbao Shang and many other strongholds of the Qing army. On 2 December, Nanking City was captured by the revolutionaries after the Battle of Nanking, 1911. On 3 December, revolutionary Su Liangbi led troops in a massacre of a large number of Manchus the exact number is not known. He was shortly afterward arrested, and his troops disbanded. <laughs> Tibetan independence In 1905, the Qing sent Zhao Erfeng to Tibet to retaliate against rebellions. By 1908, Zhao was appointed imperial resident in Lhasa. Zhao was beheaded in December 1911 by pro-Republican forces. The bulk of the area that was historically known as Kham was now claimed to be the Ziking Administrative District, created by the Republican revolutionaries. By the end of 1912, the last Manchu troops were forced out of Tibet through India. Tubton Gyatso, the 13th Dalai Lama, returned to Tibet in January 1913 from Sikkim, where he had been residing. 
When the new ROC government apologized for the actions of the Qing and offered to restore the Dalai Lama to his former position, he replied that he was not interested in Chinese ranks, that Tibet had never been subordinated to China, that Tibet was an independent country, and that he was assuming the spiritual and political leadership of Tibet. Because of this, many have read this reply as a formal declaration of independence. The Chinese side ignored the response, and Tibet had 30 years free of interference from China. Topic. Mongolian independence At the end of 1911, the Mongols took action with an armed revolt against the Manchu authorities but were unsuccessful in the attempt. An independence movement took place that was not limited to just North Outer Mongolia but was a pan-Mongolian phenomenon. On 29 December 1911, Bogod Khan became the leader of the Mongol Empire. Inner Mongolia became a contested terrain between Khan and the Republic. In general, Russia supported the independence of Outer Mongolia including during the time of the Xinhai Revolution. Tibet and Mongolia then recognized each other in a treaty. <laughs> Diwa and Yila Uprising In Xinjiang on 28 December, Lu Shanzhen Lu Xianzhen and the revolutionaries started the Diwa Uprising Diwa Qi. This was led by more than 100 members of Gailohui. This uprising failed. On 7 January 1912, the Yila Uprising Yili Qi Yi with Feng Temin began. Qing governor Yuan Dawa, Yuan Dawa fled and handed over his resignation to Yang Zhengxin, because he could not handle fighting the revolutionaries. In the morning of 8 January, a new Yila government was established for the revolutionaries, but the revolutionaries would be defeated at Jing in January and February. Eventually, because of the abdication to come, Yuan Shikai recognized Yang Zhengxin's rule, appointed him governor of Xinjiang, and had the province join the republic. Eleven more former Qing officials would be assassinated in Jiangxi, Karashar, Aksu, Kucha, Luntai, and Kashgar in April and May 1912. The revolutionaries printed new multilingual media. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Taiwan Uprising. In 1911, as part of the Xinhai Revolution, Tongmengui sent Luo Fu Xing, Luo Fu Xing, to the island of Taiwan to free it from being occupied by the Japanese. The goal was to bring Taiwan Island back to the Chinese Republic by having the Taiwan Uprising. Taiwan Chi Luo was caught and killed on 3 March 1914. What was left was known as the Miaoli Incident, Miao Li Shi Jian, where more than 1,000 Taiwanese were executed by the Japanese police. Luo's sacrifice is commemorated in Miaoli. Topic: <laughs> Change of government. Topic. North – Qing court last transformation attempt On 1 November 1911, the Qing government appointed Yuan Shikai as the prime minister of the imperial cabinet, replacing Prince Qing. On 3 November, after a proposition by CEN Chengshan from the constitutional monarchy movement, Li Xian Yun Dong in 1903, the Qing court passed the 19 articles, Xian Fa Zhang Da Xin Tiao Shi Ju Tiao which turned the Qing from an autocratic system with the emperor having unlimited power to a constitutional monarchy. On 9 November, Huang Xing even cabled Yuan Shikai and invited him to join the republic. The court changes were too late, and the emperor was about to have to step down. Topic. South – Government in Nanking On 28 November 1911, Wuchang and Hanyang had fallen back to the Qing army. So for safety, the revolutionaries convened their first conference at the British concession in Hankou on 30 November. By 2 December, the revolutionary forces were able to capture Nanking in the uprising, the revolutionaries decided to make it the site of the new provisional government. At the time, Beijing was still the Qing capital. North-South Conference On 18 December, the North-South Conference Nan was held in Shanghai to discuss the North and South issues. Yuan Shikai selected Tang Xiaoyi as his representative. Tang left Beijing for Wuhan to negotiate with the revolutionaries. The revolutionaries chose Wu Tingfang. 
With the intervention of six foreign powers, the United Kingdom, the United States, Germany, Russia, Japan, and France, Tang Xiaoyi and Wu Tingfang began to negotiate a settlement at the British concession. Foreign businessman Edward Selby Little Lee Day Lee acted as the negotiator and facilitated the peace agreement. They agreed that Yuan Shikai would force the Qing Emperor to abdicate in exchange for the southern province's support of Yuan as the President of the Republic. After considering the possibility that the new republic might be defeated in a civil war or by foreign invasion, Sun Yat-sen agreed to Yuan's proposal to unify China under Yuan Shikai's Beijing government. Further decisions were made to let the emperor rule over his little court in the new summer palace. He would be treated as a ruler of a separate country and have expenses of several million taels in silver. Topic: <laughs> Establishment of the Republic. Topic. Republic of China declared and national flag issue On 29 December 1911, Sun Yat-sen was elected as the first provisional president, 1 January 1912, was set as the first day of the first year of the ROC. On 3 January, the representatives recommended Li Yuanhong as the provisional vice president. During and after the Xinhai Revolution, many groups that participated wanted their own pennant as the national flag. During the Wuchang Uprising, the military units of Wuchang wanted the nine-star flag with Taijitu. Others in competition included Liu Haodong's blue sky with a white sun flag. Huang Xing favored a flag bearing the mythical, well-field, system of village agriculture. In the end, the assembly compromised, the national flag would be the banner of five races under one union. The five races under one union flag with horizontal stripes represented the five major nationalities of the republic. The red represented Han, the yellow represented Manchus, the blue for Mongols, the white for Muslims, and the black for Tibetans. Despite the general target of the uprisings to be the Manchus, Sun Yat-sen, Song Jiaoran and Huang Xing unanimously advocated racial integration to be carried out from the mainland to the frontiers. Donghuaman Incident On 16 January, while returning to his residence, Yuan Shikai was ambushed in a bomb attack organized by the Tongmengui in Donghuaman, Donghuaman, Beijing. A total of 18 revolutionaries were involved. About 10 of the guards died, but Yuan himself was not seriously injured. He sent a message to the revolutionaries the next day pledging his loyalty and asking them not to organize any more assassination attempts against him. Topic. Abdication of the emperor Zhang Jian drafted an abdication proposal that was approved by the Provisional Senate. On 20 January, Wu Tingfang of the Nanking Provisional Government officially delivered the Imperial Edict of Abdication to Yuan Shikai for the abdication of Puyi. On the 22nd of January, Sun Yat-sen announced that he would resign the presidency in favor of Yuan Shikai if the latter supported the emperor's abdication. Yuan then pressured Empress Dowager Longyu with the threat that the lives of the imperial family would not be spared if abdication did not come before the revolutionaries reached Beijing, but if they agreed to abdicate, the provisional government would honor the terms proposed by the imperial family. On 3 February, Empress Dowager Longyu gave Yuan full permission to negotiate the abdication terms of the Qing Emperor. Yuan then drew up his own version and forwarded it to the revolutionaries on 3 February. His version consisted of three sections instead of two. On 12 February 1912, after being pressured by Yuan and other ministers, Puyi age six, and Empress Dowager Longyu accepted Yuan's terms of abdication. <laughs> <laughs> Debate over the capital As a condition for ceding leadership to Yuan Shikai, Sun Yat-sen insisted that the provisional government remain in Nanjing. On 14 February, the Provisional Senate initially voted 20 to 5 in favor of making Beijing the capital over Nanjing, with two votes going for Wuhan and one for Tianjin. The Senate majority wanted to secure the peace agreement by taking power in Beijing. Zhang Jian and others reasoned that having the capital in Beijing would check against Manchu restoration and Mongol secession. But Sun and Huang Xing argued in favor of Nanjing to balance against Yuan's power base in the north. Li Yuanhong presented Wuhan as a compromise. 
The next day, the Provisional Senate voted again, this time, 19–6 in favor of Nanjing with two votes for Wuhan. Sun sent a delegation led by Kai Yuanpei and Wang Jingwei to persuade Yuan to move to Nanjing. Yuan welcomed the delegation and agreed to accompany the delegates back to the south. Then on the evening of 29 February, riots and fires broke out all over the city. They were allegedly started by disobedient troops of Cao Kun, a loyal officer of Yuan. The disorder gave Yuan the pretext to stay in the north to guard against unrest. On 10 March, Yuan was inaugurated in Beijing as the Provisional President of the Republic of China. On 5 April, the Provisional Senate in Nanjing voted to make Beijing the capital of the Republic and convened in Beijing at the end of the month. Republican government in Beijing On 10 March 1912, Yuan Shikai was sworn as the second provisional president of the Republic of China in Beijing. The government based in Beijing, called the Baiyang government, was not internationally recognized as the legitimate government of the Republic of China until 1928, so the period from 1912 until 1928 was known simply as the Baiyang period. The first National Assembly election took place according to the Provisional Constitution. While in Beijing, the Kuomintang was formed on 25 August 1912. The KMT held the majority of seats after the election. Song Jiaoren was elected as premier. However, Song was assassinated in Shanghai on 20 March 1913, under the secret order of Yuan Shikai. Proposed Han monarchs and retention of aristocratic noble titles Some advocated that a Han be installed as emperor, either the descendant of Confucius, who was the Duke Yansheng, or the Ming dynasty imperial family descendant, the Marquis of Extended Grace. The Duke Yansheng was proposed for replacing the Qing dynasty as emperor by Liang Qichao. The Han hereditary aristocratic nobility like the Duke Yansheng, Marquis of Extended Grace, and the title of the Wujing Boshi changed to De Sheng Zhe Sheng Shanxi Nanzong Fengzi Guan. Da Sheng Ji Sheng Xian Shi Nan Zong Feng Si Guan and the titles held by the descendants of Mencius, Zhengzi, and Yan Wei were retained by the new Republic of China and the title holders continued to receive their pensions. Western views The American Christian Rev. Dr. George F. Pentecost spoke out against Western imperialism, saying, As for the Chinese, I have the highest opinion not only of the Chinese character, but of the Chinese fitness for self-government. I think they are eminently fitted to make a republic successful. China, for instance, is infinitely better fitted than is Russia for development along republican lines. In fact, China has always been practically a republic. It has had its dynasties of rulers, but the political unit of China has always been the village. The village people have always had their influence upon the government. What is more, the average Chinaman is intelligent. <inaudible> <inaudible> Legacy <inaudible> <inaudible> Social influence After the revolution, there was a huge outpouring of anti-Manchu sentiment through China, but particularly in Beijing where thousands died in anti-Manchu violence as imperial restrictions on Han residency and behavior within the city crumbled as Manchu imperial power crumbled. Anti-Manchu sentiment is recorded in books like A Short History of Slaves New Kai Shao Shi and the biographies of avaricious officials and corrupt personnel Tan Guan Wu Li Chuan by Lao Li, Lao Li during the abdication of the last emperor, Empress Dowager Longyu, Yuan Shikai and Sun Yat-sen both tried to adopt the concept of Manchu and Han as one family. Man Han Yi Jia. People started exploring and debating with themselves on the root cause of their national weakness. This new search of identity was the new culture movement. Manchu culture and language, on the contrary, has become virtually extinct by 2007. Unlike revolutions in the West, the Xinhai Revolution did not restructure society. The participants of the Xinhai Revolution were mostly military personnel, old type bureaucrats, and local gentries. These people still held regional power after the Xinhai Revolution. Some became warlords. There were no major improvements in the standard of living. Writer Lu Xuan commented in 1921 during the publishing of The True Story of Aq, ten years after the Xinhai Revolution, that basically nothing changed except 
The Manchus have left the kitchen. The economic problems were not addressed until the governance of Chang Ching Kuo in Taiwan and Deng Xiaoping on the mainland. The Xinhai Revolution mainly got rid of feudalism from late imperial China. In the usual view of historians, there are two restorations of feudal power after the revolution the first was Yuan Shikai, the second was Zhang Xuan. Both were unsuccessful, but the feudal remnants returned to China with the Cultural Revolution in a concept called Guangxi, where people relied not on feudal relationships, but personal relationships, for survival. While Guangxi is helpful in Taiwan, on the mainland, Guangxi is necessary to get anything done. <laughs> <laughs> Historical significance The Xinhai Revolution overthrew the Qing government and 2,000 years of monarchy. Throughout Chinese history, old dynasties had always been replaced by new dynasties. The Xinhai Revolution, however, was the first to overthrow a monarchy completely and attempt to establish a republic to spread democratic ideas throughout China. Though in 1911 at the provisional government welcome ceremony, Sun Yat-sen said, "...the revolution is not yet successful, the comrades still need to strive for the future." Zhe Ming Shang Wei Shang Gong Tong Ji Rang Shu Nu Li Since the 1920s, the two dominant parties the ROC and PRC see the Xinhai Revolution quite differently. Both sides recognize Sun Yat-sen as the father of the nation, but in Taiwan, they mean, father of the Republic of China. On the mainland, Sun Yat-sen was seen as the man who helped bring down the Qing, a pre-condition for the communist state founded in 1949. The PRC views Sun's work as the first step towards the real revolution in 1949, when the communists set up a truly independent state that expelled foreigners and built a military and industrial power. The father of New China is seen as Mao Zedong. In 1954, Liu Shaoqi was quoted as saying that the Xinhai Revolution inserted the concept of a republic into common people. Zhou Enlai pointed out that the Xinhai Revolution overthrew the Qing rule, ended 2,000 years of monarchy, and liberated the mind of people to a great extent, and opened up the path for the development of future revolution. This is a great victory. <laughs> <laughs> Modern evaluation A change in the belief that the revolution had been a generally positive change began in the late 1980s and 1990s, but Zhang Shizhao was quoted as arguing that, "...when talking about the Xinhai revolution, the theorist these days tends to overemphasize. The word success was way overused. The success of the democracy gained from the revolution can vary depending on one's view." Even after the death of Sun Yat-sen in 1925, for 60 years, the KMT controlled all five branches of the government, none were independent. Yan Jiaqi, founder of the Federation for a Democratic China, has said that Sun Yat-sen is to be credited as founding China's first republic in 1912, and the second republic is the people of Taiwan and the political parties there now democratizing the region. Meanwhile, the ideals of democracy are far from realized on the mainland. For example, former Chinese Premier Wen Jiabao once said in a speech that without real democracy, there is no guarantee of economic and political rights, but he led a 2011 crackdown against the peaceful Chinese Jasmine protests. Liu Xiaobo, a pro-democracy activist who received the Global 2010 Nobel Peace Prize, died in prison. Others, such as Qin Yangmin, Qin Yangmin of the Democracy Party of China, who was only released from prison after 12 years, do not praise the Xinhai Revolution. Qin Yangmen said the revolution only replaced one dictator with another, that Mao Zedong was not an emperor, but he is worse than the emperor. See also 1911 film German Revolution of 1918-19 Military of the Republic of China National Revolutionary Army Russian Revolution 1917 Taisho period Timeline of late anti-Qing rebellions Topic Notes Topic References Topic Further reading Topic Primary sources Topic. Contemporary accounts 
Topic: <inaudible> Secondary sources. English. Chinese. Topic: <inaudible> External links. Media related to Xinhai Revolution at Wikimedia Commons.